people. Taking a listen right now to President Biden addressing the nation concerning those protests. Is the rule of law. Both must be upheld. We are not an authoritarian nation where we silence people or squash dissent. The American people are heard. In fact, peaceful protest is in the best tradition of how Americans respond to consequential issues. But, but, neither are we a lawless country. <clears throat> we are a civil society, and order must prevail. Throughout our history, we've often faced moments like this because we are a big, diverse, free-thinking and freedom-loving nation. In moments like this, there are always those who rush in to score political points. But this isn't a moment for politics. It's a moment for clarity. So let me be clear. Peaceful protest in America. Violent protest is not protected. Peaceful protest is. It's against the law when violence occurs. Destroying property is not a peaceful protest. It's against the law. Vandalism, trespassing, breaking windows, shutting down campuses, forcing the cancellation of classes and graduations. None of this is a peaceful protest. Threatening people, intimidating people, instilling fear in people is not peaceful protest. It's against the law. Dissent is essential to democracy, but dissent must never lead to disorder or to denying the rights of others so students can finish the semester and their college education. Look, it's basically a matter of fairness. It's a matter of what's right. There's the right to protest, but not the right to cause chaos. People have the right to get an education the right to get a degree, the right to walk across the campus safely without fear of being attacked. But let's be clear about this as well. There should be no place on any campus, no place in America, for anti-Semitism or threats of violence against Jewish students. There is no place for hate speech or violence of any kind, whether it's anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, or discrimination against Arab Americans or Palestinian Americans. It's simply wrong. There's no place for racism in America. It's all wrong. It's un-American. I understand people have strong feelings and deep convictions. In America, we respect the right and protect the right for them to express that. But it doesn't mean anything goes. It needs to be done without violence, without destruction, without hate, and within the law. You know, make no mistake. As president, I will always defend free speech, and I will always be just as strong in standing up for the rule of law. That's my responsibility to you, the American people, and my obligation to the Constitution. Thank you very much. Mr. President, have the protests forced you to reconsider any of the policies with regard to the region? No. Thank Mr. you. Mr. President, do you think the National Guard should no. intervene? No. Mr. President, do you agree with President Biden there addressing the nation for the first time about these protests happening on campus. For more on the president's response, we're joined by White House correspondent Serena Marshall. Serena, the president there drawing a very clear distinction between peaceful protest and breaking the law, between having strong convictions and engaging in hate speech and discrimination. How is this going to play out with voters? Yeah, well, the president is using this as an opportunity. We heard it right there, a very short, succinct speech when asked at the end whether or not he would be mobilizing the National Guard. As Republicans have called for a succinct no when he was asked uh, again during this speech uh, to address anti-Semitism, to address anti-Palestinian uh, feelings, he said there is a line between defense of free speech and the law. And he wanted to make that distinction clear, saying he respects Americans' right to speak out freely, to protest, but when you damage buildings, when you take over buildings, that goes into law breaking. During that speech, he said that violent protest is not protected, that dissent must never lead to disorder. So the president standing by the right to protest, but saying these protesters must ensure they are doing so within the law, not dis resorting to violence in any way. And it was interesting, Carolyn, because he said there that it's not just no place in America for anti-Semitism, there's no place in America for anti-Muslim rhetoric, anti Palestinian rhetoric that America is a place all Americans should feel safe and protected, including on college campuses. It was almost a flashback to the
the 2020 campaign Biden that we just saw, a president who was about bringing Americans together, who said that he could uh, deal with the discord, uh, with chaos in the way that he would unite Americans. That that's what he did when he was in the Senate, bringing both sides of the uh, both sides of the aisle together. And we saw that come out in the president's remarks just now. And that is the emphasis that he was trying to make there, that protest, as you will, do not break the law. And that is why um, we will likely hear from Republicans on the other side of this. They're continuing to say this discord is the root of President Biden. But then again, when he was asked if any change in Israeli policy, succinctly he responded there, no. Uh, but it was the president breaking his silence on this issue after 10 days and lots of criticism from both sides of the aisle for not speaking out sooner. Serena, how significant of an issue is this to voters? I mean, we're, what, six months um, until the November election. This is an issue now that has been dominating the news for the past couple of weeks. But how significant is it an issue for voters? Well, there was recently a new poll that just came out that said almost 50% of voters actually are against these uh, pro-Palestinian protests on college campus, a Mar Marist poll that just recently published. Uh, and so when it comes to the wide swath of Americans, it doesn't seem like they're quite as read in. But among young Americans, what's happening in Israel and Gaza has taken root, and that is why we've seen these protests really manifest on college campuses. But the administration says there is a difference between our foreign policy ensuring Israel's right to defend themselves, ensuring Gaza has the humanitarian aid needed, uh, and what they do in order to get votes. And that is something, again, Carolyn, we keep saying it, though, we are six months away from the election. So much can change between now and then. Certainly so. White House correspondent Serena Marshall, thanks so much.